up guys tc takarius wills here and uh today i want to talk about or really explain how it is that a gas furnace works and how it ignites and because what most people think is that a furnace just turns on the minute that you you know flip that thermostat over to heat you know but there are certain devices and that are built within a furnace that will allow it to light you know, and it all has to be properly installed from the, you know, from the gas line, the size of the gas line, the voltage going to the furnace, what voltage does a furnace run off of, you know, how much it really costs to operate a furnace, you know, how much electricity does a furnace use? Because contrary to what you believe, even though it's a gas furnace, it still has to have electricity and, uh, you know, the types of vents that the furnace will operate off of. Um, and we're talking both standard efficiency and high efficiency, you know. Um, this one I'm standing in front of is a Ream 80% furnace, which is the standard is about 80%. Um, now, at the time this furnace was installed, the standard was looks to be 78, 78 point, yeah, 78.0. But now the standard efficiency is 80%. So, and this is the 80% furnace. Um, the, type, the, the wire system that a furnace will run off of in terms of low voltage and, uh, you know, the heat output that you're going to get out of, a, out of a furnace, out of the vents. So, um, so and, you know, there's people out here that they'll go out here and they'll try to, oh, my furnace won't at night, I'm going to try and trick it. There's technicians out here that will bypass safety switches to get people heating just until they can get back to fix the actual issue never do that you know you never bypass the safety switches that are built into a furnace because when that safety switch is not reacting accordingly there's obviously something wrong inside that furnace that there's either a faulty part that part could be faulty and not functioning properly or that safety switch is doing its damn job and is not allowing that furnace to ignite for a reason so i'm gonna go ahead and uh get to it this furnace the uh ream has been through a couple you know cabinet changes this one you just pop it off <laughs> essentially um uh, and i probably should have mounted that uh energy guy soon because i just ripped it and that is one of my pet peeves is when people or installers will leave the energy guy sticker sitting like this that bothers me it really does because that happens and it can fall off and get lost you know but basically what you have what we're looking at here before i even open this next door i'm going to show you what we've got is we've got our input. Everything on that side of the gas valve where this black iron is not here, this little black elbow, you know, 90 degree up, 90 degree, you know, essentially everything on this side is your input gas. You know, in some furnaces that may be swapped around, but everything on this side for this furnace is my input, okay? Gas does not always flow through this, okay? This is basically an open and closing switch. This is not a uh, variable flow gas valve. This is a single flow, open or close. It's that simple. Um, and then of course, I'll, you know, I'll talk about how you can adjust those gas pressures and whatnot. But for this furnace, you know, it's open and close. What you have here, this motor right here, a furnace actually has two motors in it, whether you believe it or not. Most people actually believe that the air in the house blows through this motor, no. This motor serves two purposes, okay? It's not just a motor. There's actually a, a wheel inside there. And I'll see if I got a clip in my phone somewhere from my Snapchat files of that wheel spinning. Uh, but you see you've got the little fan blade right there, which is supposed to try to help keep it. Because you got to understand, these, this is actually what this called. This is called an induced draft blower assembly is what it is. Now, on these types of furnaces, this is not a positive pressure, by the way. You know, this, this serves two purposes. Its purpose is to, one, pull air and fuel mixture into those holes right there. Those holes, those, those are the heat exchanger holes, okay? That, those holes are where the flame and all the heat of that flame flows through. And it flows through those, those some people call them burner tubes or heat exchangers or combustion chambers, whatever you want to call them. They're really heat exchangers, all right? So, and if for some odd reason that that motor is not spinning this furnace will never try to ignite 
Now, there are some furnaces out here, like I remember the old Linuxes, and I actually do have a Snapchat video of that that I will input in here. Matter of fact, I'll show it to you right now. Twin furnace. Watch them both light at the same time. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That is so tight. Oh, I'm obsessed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And then this flap opens and closes. It's so tight. Those types of furnaces, those Linux furnaces, they do not have these. And, you know, and of course, those are older. Those are natural draft furnaces that, you know, that the basically how they operate is you saw it in the you, I, I didn't really get a good video of it, but the flap opens. Okay, and there's no induced draft blower assembly, and that thing ignites, and it, the you know it, the flame never rolls out. Now for these types of furnaces, if there's multiple safety features, number one, I'm gonna start with the one that's closest to the outside of the furnace. This right here, you know, this right here is your pressure switch. Okay, now this pressure switch job is to kill this gas valve right here if for any reason this stops working or you know something clogs this vent pipe or the wheel falls off and I'm telling you there have been times where this is spinning and operating like it should but the blower wheel inside has rusted and broke off or you know a stick got like for a packaging it outside a stick got inside there and it broke off you know, or a stick got in there and stopped it from spinning. Because keep in mind, you know, this motor is not a freaking 700 horsepower engine or a 700 horsepower electric motor. You know, it's, I mean, if there's something sitting there, it ain't going to spin. You know, um, so this is a pressure switch what this is. You got a circuit going through there. And as of right now, we just have a circuit going to it. We don't have a circuit going through it. So basically, this is a normally open switch, is what this is. This call, or it'll say NO. So um, what this switch does is the negative pressure or the the vacuum that is being pulled in here. When this motor turns on, essentially, it's just like you taking your mouth on this hose, and this hose is connected directly in here to this induced drive blower assembly, right? And it goes down, and it is connected to that switch right there. All right, when that when this comes on it's going to close this so now this wire is now still connected to that wire and it tells that board that okay i'm going to sit here and make sure that that's going to stay like that it's going to stay closed and that that circuit is going to stay connected because this now this ring furnace these ring furnaces they do not ignite fast like those hiles okay ring they the, you know it's most of them they have a certain t amount of time that they'll pre-purge before they'll try to ignite and that's actually the, the longer it takes to pre-purge the safer your furnace is essentially because sometimes a furnace will come on and that switch will close for a split second like those hiles you know that high, some of them hiles don't even give this motor time enough to start up all the way at its full speed get up, get up to its full rpm range and that thing's done already tried to ignite so this is basically and now the second um, the second purpose that this motor serves is it does not push, it does not push carbon monoxide out. It kind of assists is what it does. You know, that uh, a positive pressure would be a high efficiency furnace when you're not, you know, because essentially the amount of heat that's going to flow out of the exhaust system in this furnace because it's only, it's low, it's going to lose 20% of its heat. It's an 80%. It's not a high efficiency. Heat rises. That's a lot of heat that's going to be going through this thing. That's why it's built in metal and not plastic like those, or plastic or hard plastic like those, uh, like those 90%ers and high efficiency furnaces. These have to be able to take a lot of heat. And if you've ever had to have one of these replaced, you know how much it costs. They're not cheap. I have came down here after this furnace has shut off completely. I'm talking about it. The, the indoor fan went through its off delay. And this thing will be so warm. And if you reach your hand in here, like I did, you see this cut on my hand right here. I reached my hand in here one time because one of the wires looked a little loose and I got hit about right there. And I yanked back and scraped my hand. This stuff gets hot, okay? And if you are not 
a technician that knows what they're doing or if you're not a you know in school for this don't please don't and i've said this on my heat pump defrost video don't go digging your hands and fingers and things this isn't 240 volts but it's still 120 volts 110 115 whatever you want to call it you know don't go digging your hands and stuff this stuff is hot there's voltage right there you know if you mess around and you snatch one of these safety features these safety device wires loose and you're gonna you're not, you're not gonna have any heat unless you reconnect what you know what you're doing you know another safety feature that a furnace has is a rollout switch in this case this one has two of them the rollout switch sometimes can be placed on the side of the uh uh, let's see, what is this called? Uh, the, the, mm, I'm gonna call this the the fuel gas, the fuel air gas mixture intake. That's what I'm gonna call that. And I'm, there's actually a word for it. I just can't think of it right now because I'm talking too fast. But that's all right. Now, uh, some of them would be placed right here. Some will be placed right down here. But in this one, it's placed up top. You know, you've got one right here and one right there. Those are called rollout switches. What those are called, and they do not automatically reset like the pressure switches do they do not automatically reset like the uh what's down here which is another safety feature you can i'm trying to focus on it that right there is not your spark igniter that right there that you see right there that is your flame sensing rod or your flame proving rod or your flame rectification whatever you want to call it basically that is a sensor that gets its you know it creates its own signal or voltage and it is very low voltage all right now when it basically gets its energy from the heat of the flame so you'll see that rod sticking up right there you see it sticking up right there that rod is always to be placed at the last heat at the last you know area where flames going to go through you got the first one the second one and the third okay a lot of times they'll place the igniter as close to the you know side where the first one's going to be at as possible or they may place it in the middle but regardless you know just because your first one is lit and your second one third fourth or fifth is lit what about the sixth one what about the seventh one yes they, they get up to seven i've seen tra them trying front and they go higher than seven this is just a but for this one we're just talking about a you know a small residential furnace that has a rating of 75,000 BTUs. Now that is the that's usually the input. Now if you if you take 80% of 75,000, so long as your gas pressure is at the level that it's supposed to be, which in this case we run off of propane at this house. So this valve ought to be sitting anywhere from 10 and a half to 11 and a half inches of water column. This should have about an 11 and a half to 12 inches of water column input. But it should never be higher than 13 because this one right here as you can see is lp gas which is liquid propane gas or natural gas only on and you always need to know what your system is running off of if you're ever curious if your gas pressure is adjusted right because if you've got natural gas burning at the same pressure as propane we got a problem propane burns at a higher pressure than uh natural gas so for this one right here natural gas pressure you can have an input an input at 10 and a half uh, inches of water column but let's see here let's see here maximum permissible gas supply pressure to the furnace that's the max but the minimum is five inches of water column 3.5 is what needs to be on the output for natural gas 3.5 inches of water column is what needs to be on the uh, output side so if you put and there's a way to adjust that pressure and check that pressure check it with a manometer is what you check it with um, so this right here, it'll, it'll even say N. You can see it kind of engraved right there. It says N, which stands for inlet. And then on the other side, I don't know if it says outlet or not. But, I mean, if you've got N on one side, there's only one other way that you can have, and that's out, out pressure. But your N, you'll take your, your tool that you use, or a, a service wrench is what we call it, and it's a, you'll take it in there and you'll kind of wrench it up. Now, before you open that up, turn your gas off okay because this is inlet pressure you don't have to worry about that on your outlet because the only time that outlet is going to be open is when this gas valve opens and if you're checking it you don't have but a certain amount of time to check that pressure if that furnace is igniting because if that furnace if you've got a problem and you're checking that gas pressure to make sure that that furnace is going to try to ignite and it's not igniting if that you know as soon as that valve opens you've got a certain amount of time before it closes again 
if that furnace did not ignite and if that rod did not sense that that flame is there because the reason that sensor is there is because if you're just dumping raw gas in here and that thing finally decides to ignite after 20 seconds of dumping raw gas in there, it might be a big boom, you know, if, especially if this isn't spinning like it's supposed to, and especially if that's not telling this system that that is spinning, you know, that that is pulling negative pressure. So without this, there is no this, and there is no this, and there is no this. And when I'm saying all this, this, without this pressure switch, there is no gas valve opening. If that gas valve open, it doesn't open, there's obviously mean there's not going to be any ignition. Now, sometimes it will try to ignite and the gas valve be stuck closed, but that's a whole different topic right there. We're talking about the basic way of how a furnace ignites. Go up to the thermostat because, you know, that, that would have to be an actual different video. But what I'm going to do is basically the thermostat is essentially right here in front of your face or on the board. So basically what we have, for, I'm, I'm gonna break it down for you. Your thermostat does nothing but take the power that's going to it on the hot side of the power, which is only 24 volts. Now, if you've got 110 or 240 running to your thermostat, I'd imagine that thermostat's probably done caught on fire on the wall or you've got shock, but your thermostat operates off of low voltage. So anywhere from 18 to 30 volts is essentially what it's gonna run off of. So really 24, we call it 24 volts. G is going to control your indoor fan, which is the, the fan that's going to be blowing through your vents, whether in the floor or in the ceiling. All right, now brown is going to be your common, okay? White is going to be your heat. Red is your power going to the thermostat and to your outdoor unit if you have a heat pump, which in this case is a straight air conditioner outside. So the only hot voltage that it's going to get is going to be coming from Y. So it's going to have common out there at all times. But the only thing that's going to turn that unit on outside is that hot side of voltage that's going to come from Y, which happens when you turn your thermostat over to the cooling mode. Now, for a furnace to ignite, of course, the gas needs to be on. You need to have 110 volts going to your board down here, which now we can finally open this up down here. Oh, what just happened? What just happened? My light went away. You know what just happened? I'm going to tell you what happened. And I'm not going to tell you how to bypass it. I'm not even going to show it to you because I, I have actually had uh, cousins and friends that will come over here and try to, well, not friends, but really cousins, come over here and try to mess with this furnace. Um, what happens is when you take the door off a furnace, your power disappears because one side of power is, you know, disabled by a switch, okay? And I said I wasn't going to show it to you, but anytime you take the door off of a furnace, your power is disabled because... That's just, I mean, that's just, that, that protects the technician and it protects, you know, from homeowners too. But of course, most people have figured that out. It's the same way as those old washing machines are. When you open the lid, it stops because it's got that little uh, door switch in there. But essentially, I'm going to show you exactly what we're looking at here. All right. Now, I'm going to show you that this is your furnace control board is what this is. All right. You have your, we're going to start from the top. This right here is our transformer. Yes, your furnace has a transformer. It's a little bitty transformer. We're not talking about the ones that sit on top of power lines. Okay, this transformer can convert 240 into 24 or 120 into 24 um, with that transformer. Now, it, it, depending on which wires you use, which for this one, we do not actually even have the options because most of them are three wire on the high voltage side and t always two wire on the, uh, or they may be three two, three or four wire uh, for the input side, depending, because some, some, some are all like, some will go 120, 208, or 240, which for this one, it's just 110 or 120, converting it into 24. That's called a step down transform is what it's called. Now, that power that goes from 24 volts is now gonna be taken here, all right? That same setup you saw right here, those wires are screwed in here. So Y for cooling, G for indoor fan, which is this back here. You see that fan motor right there? I'm gonna try to get a better video, a better shot of it in here. There's your indoor fan right there. It looks, it looks kind of like a turbine or a squirrel cage is what it is. All right, when that spins, that's what's gonna send the air. That's This right here is what pulls the air from that filter which of course this is your return wheel right here 
is your return uh, return pipe or return box, you know, return duct, essentially, is right there. Right here, you're going to have your fuse. There's your low voltage fuse. This fuse is going to protect things like, you know, overcurrent protection on the low voltage side or if, you know, a faulty part outside, because a faulty part outside can cause this board to burn up in here. You know, or if this board was to somehow get shorted out, the fuse may catch it before anything else does. Um, and a lot of times when the fuse blows, the thermostat will go completely blank. So if your thermostat ever goes completely blank, and if you ever just want to, you know, if you want to fix it yourself, which I'm not saying you should, you know, dig your fingers in here. You know, if you're, if, if, if you're a future technician and you want to save your parents some money instead of having to call the guy out there, you know, go get you some fuses from the automotive store or Walmart or something. Kill your power. Make sure that fuse ain't dark. But don't just be replacing it now. If you, if you want to be a tech, you got to diagnose and figure out what it is that's causing this fuse to, to blow. Um, these little black boxes that you see on here, these are relays. Relays, all right. These are little low voltage relays that will engage this high voltage down here. There's neutral sitting there at all times, so I figured I cut it off. Um, but essentially, what you have these little yellow and blue and black and red and white. White usually always represents the neutral side because on power electricity, you always have to have two sides of voltage. You need to have a hot leg, a neutral leg, and a way back to ground. Really three, you know, three ways in case something shorts out. Um, so as, as you can see right here, this white, it may say neutral on the board if I can get all these wires out the way. But white is usually always associated with neutral. You know what, I'm going to try to get it. You can see it right there. You see? You see it says neutrals, white. You're going to have your incoming white, which in this case, it's going to come all the way up. I'm tracing it it gets its power from the transformer. So we're getting our high voltage neutral from our transformer directly, all right? Now that neutral is connected on the back of this board to this neutral and to this neutral for the induced draft blower assembly, which is this right here, this two pan plug right here. This is gonna be going to my induced draft blower assembly. So if I follow these wires all the way up through there, and as you can see, I got my white and my black and my newts, or my white and black, my hot leg, all the way up. Oh, see it again right here and right here. Boom, right there. Always be able to trace your circuits out. Know what you're looking at. And if you ever have trouble tracing your circuits out, being that everything is color-coded, you've got a schematic right here that tells me exactly what it is that I just looked at. Big part for this for the technicians. A big part of wanting to be a technician is you have to be able to read schematics, okay? Because a lot of times, you know, a, a previous technician may have been there before you, or a previous company, and they may have modified something. But if you can still see the right outs on the board, or if you can see that, okay, I have a bundle of wires right here that are the same color. If they're all white, well, if they're all white, and you see on here that your neutrals on that board are all white, well, that that can tell you that you've got your neutral. All right, if you see this red wire, say, say that the, for some reason it was rubbed out right here and you couldn't see that little M2 on that board or if you couldn't see the writing on the board, well, you see, okay, well, I got to figure out where that yellow wire is going. All right, that yellow wire is, of course, going to be going to your indoor motor and I'm going to tell you exactly what we're talking about here. So for that yellow wire, I'm going to tell you what that means on this schematic right here. So as you can see, we have our IBM, IBM, as you can see right there, IBM is going to stand for indoor blower motor. All right. White is going to come over here and it's going to go on neutral. We saw that on the board. We've got our neutrals. All right. Black is going to be used for our cooling speed, which in this case, this is a three, sp three speed motor is what this is. We've got a certain speed that we're going to use for cooling, fan only, and heat. Now that fan only is essentially people get that confused when they say, oh, should I just leave my fan on on or should I leave it on auto? Well, anytime you run that fan, it's going to run at such a low speed that you're barely even going to be able to hear it because its purpose is to circulate the air in the house, to, you, to always keep air moving and to keep air constantly being filtrated. So long as you change your filters every month, your air can be a lot cleaner. So as you can see, our cooling speed is going to be triggered by a or energized by the black wire. 
R, which is our, and essentially, as you can see right here, we've got a medium speed. And our medium speed is going to be on that yellow wire. And we're going to be using medium for heat, it looks like. Our low speed is going to be on R. And like I said, that fan speed is going to run at its lowest speed for this system in particular. Now, our uh, let's see, we got our cool, our heat, and our fan. Our cool is going to be on black. Our heat's going to be on yellow. And our fan on is going to be on red. So we got high, or essentially this one actually is almost a four speed motor because we got a high, a low, a medium high, and a low, and a medium low. So, um, and of course that's going to be on M2, which is an unused motor terminal. As you can see, it's poking right there. So we're not going to be using medium high, is what we're not going to be using. So we're going to be using medium low, low, and high, essentially. So, and that brown, those BR, BR, if you don't know what that stands for, let's see, BR, BR, it's got two BRs, one stands for blower relay, but essentially, BR is going to be brown on this one, and the reason I know that is because I've seen it enough times to know that those brown wires are going to go to your capacitor, because RC it's more than likely going to stand for run capacitor is what that stands for. As you can see, run capacitor. That A capacitor is what's going to start your motor. It's going to give it a direction, and it's going to give it the starting torque it needs because if you've ever, you know, turned your fan on and all you hear is a mm, and it never starts, a lot of times your capacitor is either dead or that motor has done seized up. You know, it's time to replace that motor. Um, so that's what that's going to mean. So now we got that sorted out. We can see that exact thing, that exact showing down here on this board. Now, of course, M2 isn't going to be up here like it was. Our M2 on this one is that red wire. It's going to be right there. M2 stands for unused motor terminal. We got our black for cool, as you can see right there, our blue for heat, our yellow for fan. See that same thing on this uh, board right here. So, and that's going to go to your indoor fan. Your capacitor for that fan, let's raise the elevator on up. You can see those two brown wires right there. And we're not talking about this one. That's our thermostat wire. We're talking about these two high voltage wires right here. That's going to go to your capacitor. This one is rated for a, looks like it, I can't even see. This one is a 7.5 microfarad capacitor is what this is. Um, plus or minus 6%. That's weird. Most of those rims are usually 20 microfarads, but for this one, it's 7.5 microfarads. As you can see, that UF is a symbol for microfarads, is what that is. So, um, of course, you got our two brown wires right there. So now, let's, 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 let's watch this furnace go through its ignition process. I know that's what y'all been waiting for. Being that I'm too lazy to go to the thermostat, I'm just going to simply jump it out right here, is what I'm going to do. So, like I said, we want that furnace to come on and heat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take red and white and we're gonna wire and nut them together. All right, gotta turn our power back on. Now I'm gonna leave both the doors off, but I'm gonna put my knee on the switch so that y'all can see exactly what's gonna happen. Because the first thing that's gonna happen is that board's gonna tell us that we got power, PWR. And it's gonna say that everything is okay, so long as everything is okay. And it's also gonna tell us when that furnace senses that that flame is there and it happens instantly i'm here to tell you because that wire that wire is going to send that signal down as soon as the heat of that flame creates that electric voltage that's that 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 uh that rod right there creates its own electricity by the heat of the flame that's where it receives its signal from the heat of that flame is going to tell that fire that this board down here that okay everything has ignited or everything has you know the furnace has ignited and it has sensed that there is a flame there so this right here, this furnace is a spark igniter, is what this is. So there is no standing pilot. These are the types of furnaces that you have. You have your pilot ignition, which there's pilot all the time. You have your, and those are called standing pilots. You have your intermittent pilot, which I do have a video of that type of pilot system in here. It's on that Heil that ignites so fast that it makes you question why you even put it in, because I don't like Heil myself. Don't get me started on carrier brands. But, uh... 
this one, and you have your intermittent pilot, and those intermittent pilots can be either spark or the hot surface igniter or HSI. Now, the difference between a spark igniter and a hot surface igniter or HSI is instead of a spark, that igniter will ignite and it'll turn, it'll glow bright orange. Some people will say red or bright orange. It's orange because some people are colorblind. And I'm talking about it's a bright orange. It is almost red, but it is not quite there yet. When that glows red, that basically is is acting as the ignition temperature of, or it actually has to ignite great, it actually has to glow and heat up to greater than the ignition temperature of the of the gas, whether, whether propane or natural gas, it has to ignite pretty dang hot. It, or, or not ignite, it, it heats up pretty dang hot. Essentially, it heats up like an oven eye is what it is. Um, and I'll actually insert a, a screenshot of here exactly what it is that that type of igniter is made out of. And it has two wires going to it because you got power going in and you got to have a way back back to ground or back on, on neutral. All right, now for this one, we only have one wire. Why is that? Because this one is going to ground itself out right here. That's why it's screwed to the case. It grounds itself out. It, cre it gets it. It's actually hundreds, probably thousands of volts that's going to go through this one wire. All right, and that one wire travels up. It goes through here. As you can see, there's two rods right there. All right, it has to be able to arc is what basically what it has to be able to do. So you're going to have that power going through one wire, but it's got to touch this one right here, okay, and it's got to ground itself out. They, and they're, they, they sit pretty dang close because they don't want to be touching. They got to be able to travel. It, essentially, it's almost like a taser is what it is. And that's basically what it is is a taser, all right, and it's got to be able to arc. So you're going to have your power going through on this one, and it's got to ground itself out on this one down here basically what it does all right so and at the same time that that's going to spark this gas valve is going to open so i'm gonna put my knee on it the first thing that's going to happen is that pressure switch is going to close all right and i'm actually going to get my meter out and show you how how exactly it closes so but first i'm going to show you it igniting so i'm put my knee on it first thing we're going to see that power light's going to come on okay start over i'm gonna tell you exactly what just happened just then that's just, i'm gonna show you how quick stuff happened that furnace said okay that means that that furnace has sensed that all of its safety switches are in the proper position that they're supposed to be in the rollout switches they're closed those are normally closed switches if that circuit is ever open the furnace will not ignite on either one of them it doesn't matter if one's broken and the other one's fine a lot of times it's going to break both circuits now um so those were closed like they were supposed to be those rollout switches is if for whatever reason this furnace gets its power or you know you turn the power on and it tries to ignite or, or it gets the call from the thermostat this motor will not even try to come on some furnaces it won't even try to come on I don't really know much about this one, if it will or not. I'm actually going to, you know what? Let me just see. I'm going to break the circuit on purpose. Let's see if it'll even try to do it. Nope. You heard that? Basically, what happened, you heard that click after that motor came on. That's called an ignition lockout is what that is. So, an ignition lockout, what that does is it's going to run this end. You can see it spinning back there from when it just came on. That's called an ignition lockout is what that is. Basically, an ignition lockout is any time a furnace has a safety switch or a circuit broken, it's going to run that indoor fan continuously. So if you've got your thermostat set to heat and that fan is just running, 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 and it's never getting, you're not getting warm after minutes, you're getting that cold air or the same temperature of uh, air out the vents as the temperature that's in your house, and your thermostat is not even heating, that means that you've got a broken circuit somewhere. Because these, when, when, when the circuit breaks on these, a wire is not just gonna magically pop loose like I just did. That was just me symbolizing what would happen. You see that little button right there, that little raised button right in the middle of it? That's gonna pop up. The heat, basically, the heat from the flame, when when it touches that, that, uh, that little disc, it's like a bimetal disc is what it is. The heat of the flame is what's gonna pop that circuit. All right, it's going to pop that switch up. And those switches are manually resettable simply because when a rollout happens, somebody's going to have to come to your house. Please don't go down there and reset that stuff every time it happens because you're having a problem. You either have an improper gas pressure 
or this is spinning when it wants to, or not even spinning at all, or this is failing to do its job. A lot of times that furnace is not going to, a lot of times when that stuff fails to do its job, it will not even try to ignite like you just saying. But to say that everything is okay, we're going to put my knee back on this thing. And I'm going to show you what's going to happen when everything's okay. So that's open like it's supposed to. Those are closed like they're supposed to. After a certain amount of time, we're going to make sure that we're holding the vacuum on this, which is what it's doing right now. It's called the pre-purge. As soon as that flame comes on, you're going to see that orange light light up. Notice how that it didn't come on until that last one came. Did you see that? Did you see that? You notice how that orange light did not come on until that very last one lit. It does not matter if the first two are lit. That last one has to be lit. And the only way that last one can be lit is if it's traveling across. And it, I, I wish I could actually, you know, I don't feel like taking this all the way out. But what's in here, we call them uh, transfers is what they're really called. Basically... They're little bitty, you know, they're little bitty flames. Probably, and this one is about three or four of them that travel across. And it's like this one ignites, them little bitty flames travel across, it ignites the next one. Those little bitty flames travel across, it ignites the next one. And it keeps doing that until it gets to the last one. That last one has to be lit in order for this furnace to say, okay, I'm going to continue with this gas valve being open. So, uh,. Now, I'm going to tell you what happens. It, with this furnace, I'm going to show you what happens if for some reason the gas is off or it's failing to ignite or, you know, you've got a blocked orifice. We'll do that again. Now, what I just did is I just turned that gas valve off. That's basically me symbolizing that, okay, I don't have any gas. This furnace right here will try to ignite two times, okay? After the second time, guess what it's going to do? It's going to go into an ignition lockout and it's going to give you an air flash on this board. Those are also indicator lights that will tell this, that tell, that try to tell the technician based on the amount of flashes, as you can see. Let me go to it. I gotta find it on the board. As you can see right now, it's trying to ignite. We'll try it again. stick this down in here so you can see exactly what's going to happen. What that was is an ignition lockout. Now, some rain furnaces have a timed ignition lockout, whether it be one or three or four hours, where it will say, say for some reason, the people working on the gas company, they have tried to integrate something into this furnace that will try to automatically reset without you having to call somebody out there. So say they had to take your gas line loose or work on your gas, or they had to move the gas line out the way to work on your plumbing, or the HVAC people were here or something. It will basically try to do it on its own to prevent the homeowner from having to go down there and see what's wrong or call somebody out there or, you know, to call them back, essentially. So if they're working on the gas and it takes them two hours to do that gas line and they get it all hooked back up and they open it back up outside, okay, well, the next cycle it tries to run, you know, which after it's locked out for a certain amount of time, when that timer times out, it's going to try to ignite again and all is well. So, you know, that's kind of that's kind of just built in. Now what I do want you to see is I want you to see when that, that spark arcs across. So I got my gas valve back off because it, the flame will get in the way of the arc that you're gonna see. So that's that's just I'm just gonna try to clear up what's gonna happen when uh when this thing sparks, how it has to travel across and not be touching. See, you see that little arc right there? The 
wait for it again. Trying to get a better angle of it. But you saw that little arc go across there like that? It's, it's just, it's almost just a little bitty taser is what it is. because I'm gonna get I'm gonna try to get on with this you know it's kind of like it's a lot that goes into this now say that everything is fine like it's supposed to be okay everything's fine like it's supposed to be we're gonna start it up we got a gas on we're gonna go through our pre-purge our safety switches are in the right position of course that's actually the first step safety switches are in the correct position this is normally open now it's closed these are normally closed and they're not going to be open so long as that flame doesn't roll out. Now once it is that this ignites after a certain amount of time that this board has realized that the fact that that flame has ignited, it's not going to turn that fan on for a few more seconds because it's going to allow this, it's going to allow that heat exchanger to warm up before it turns that fan on. So we're at night, our fan's not on yet, so I'm going to stick this back down in here. Magnetize this up somewhere where we can all see it. All right. I'm gonna get my leads down here. I'm gonna turn this to check for continuity, right? To make sure that we don't, to either we do or we don't have an open or closed circuit. Which right now we have an OL, which stands for open line or open circuit, or we don't have a connection. We, you know, we got a broken wire or something. That's what that stands for. Okay. I'm gonna show you what's exactly is gonna happen as soon as we gain a circuit. All right, that's what it means when we, you know, we've got two wires or a circuit or a switch or a terminal that's touching another terminal. Essentially, that basically means we've got a connection. With and, and you always want to check that without power on. Okay, so. Right now, we don't have any power on, so in order to check that, you gotta unplug some wires. So as you can see, I'm gonna show you. So as of right now, we've got that one on one terminal. All right, you see the terminal right there, and we're gonna put on another one. As of right now, we are still open line. Now I'm gonna show you exactly what's gonna happen to this furnace, as soon as I, or exactly to this pressure switch that I'm testing for continuity. So as soon as I put my knee on this, and I'm calling for heat, and this motor comes on. It's going to pull that vacuum through this pipe, and it's going to pull that switch closed. Ready? That's, that's exactly how that switch works right there. So the second thing that's going to happen, you know, after it's checked all its safety switches and pressure switches and high limit switches, those, the pressure switch, like I said, it better be open when they're upon startup until its vacuum is being pulled. The high limit switch, it better be closed. Those rollout switches, they better be closed. Are we okay to ignite? Let's start that induced draft blower assembly up. We're going to start that up, let it go through its pre-purge. Did my pressure switch close and are my other safety switches still open like the or 
or my other safety switch is still in a position that they're supposed to be at, as in closed. Okay, well, let's try to ignite then. It's going to try to spark, or that hot surface igniter is going to glow red. That gas valve ought to open. It should ignite. But are we fine? Just because it says, you know, just because that board says okay, is that flame light on? Can it sense that it did ignite? Can it sense that there's a flame there? Is a flame there? Okay. I'm going to heat my heat exchanger up and leave that gas valve open for a little while. Let that heat exchanger get warm. I'm going to bring that indoor fan on now. It's going to make them clicks. That relay is going to engage that indoor fan or, you know, that variable speed motor is going to do its little rock and shake dance and shake back and forth and twerk and everything else. You know what I'm saying? And once it realizes what it's supposed to do or once it gets its poles in line, you know, it's going to start spinning. It's going to spin. It's going to get spin at the speed it's supposed to spin at based on the wire that it's sending that voltage out on. And it's going to heat your house up. Now, even, even though it's a flame, when that furnace first comes on, even though it waited a while to cut that heat exchanger on, you're not going to get that warm air out the vents immediately. But the longer that furnace runs, the warmer that air is going to get until it reaches its max design output temperature. What y'all don't understand is just because... That furnace, you know, reaches 130 degrees out the vents or 110 or 115, 120, 125, it ain't going to quit climbing because uh, that furnace is going to follow, which for this one, matter of fact, let me just go down here and show you. The furnace has what's called a temperature rise is what it's going to, it's what it's rated at. This furnace in particular, when I show it to you, it, all furnaces are rated at a temperature rise. Some are rated at 35 degree, 45 degree, 55 degree temperature rises. So basically, you know, if it's 70 degrees going inside your return grill and it's rated for a 35 degree temperature rise, the air coming out of your vent should be at 105 degrees at 70 degrees. You know, 71 degrees, when it's done raised at temperature, the air coming out of your vent ought to be at 106, 107, somewhere in there. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be exact. As long as it's in that range, you know what I'm saying? Some of them will give you a range. Some of them will give you an exact number. Don't panic if it's a little bit more. You probably should panic if it's a little bit less, though. Oh, my goodness. I didn't even... It's the first time I ever looked at this. We're actually at, as you can see, it says air temperature. Um, it's 35 degrees. 35 to 65. This one's giving a range. So as long as this furnace is heating the air up, to 35 or 65 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the air that's coming through that filter grill, you're okay. Any less or any more, you might want to panic a little bit. You know, you might want to check your gas pressures, check your airflow, check your filters. Make sure everything's okay. Now, for you Celsius lovers, that 35 degrees should be 19 degrees Celsius and 65 degrees should be 36 degrees Celsius. So let's go test that right quick. Turn that back on. Give me this door. Cause I'm not gonna be down here to hold it when it's getting ready to ignite. Turn it. So the fan hasn't came on yet. There you go. temperature range that we're looking for is 35 to 65 degrees on our temperature rise as in so basically like I said it should be able to heat the air up between 35 to 65 degrees greater than the air that is receiving inside the, you know pulling down through it this where are we at my thermometer turned off oh that thermostat just cut off I heard it click we're at 120.4 degrees, 120.6 degrees coming out the vents. So let's go see where our return temp's at. It's pretty dang accurate. It's kind of hot in here. Got my calculator that I got right here. So we were at what, 120? 
120.6, or let me start over. See, I can't even see right. 120.6 minus, let me go back over here. I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna say 79 minus 79. 41.6, we are well in range, okay? 35 to 65 is what that furnace was designed for. And we are, that furnace is heating up the air 41.6 degrees warmer than the air that's going in it. So that furnace is a-okay. I hope y'all enjoyed my video. I know it was a long lengthy one, but there's, y'all gotta understand that there's more that goes into this stuff. Somebody thought of this. You know, there's more than just on, off, heat, cool. Somebody thought about it. And there's people out there like me that have to diagnose it. We gotta, you gotta understand how it works if you wanna fix it. You gotta understand what it's doing. You gotta understand its language. I'm, I'm trying to think of a joke. You got to know how to handle them air handlers. You know what I'm saying? You can't let that furnace beat you. You can't let that furnace get so hot that you can't figure out what's going on. Because it's too hot. <laughs> I'm out.